So, in this episode, we're going to be talking about just all the mechanics Rosa has to offer with Luma. Now, there is a lot, and I'm going to try breaking this down into three sections. There's going to be the beginner stuff, the stuff you need to know with the character. Then the more intermediate stuff, stuff that you're going to have to learn eventually is very useful, but it's not like going to be a priority for playing the character. And then follow the advanced stuff, this is the stuff that... You're going to eventually want to know how to do it. It's going to be useful. Some of this is going to be key stuff, to be honest. But it's not going to be stuff you need to learn right away. This will be the stuff you learn when you have the previous sections down. You're ready to really get into the more intricate and potentially niche where it's more difficult to do Rosalina tech. And so, with that said, let's get started with the beginner mechanics for Rosalina. Like the absolute need to know, not too hard to execute stuff. So, one of the most important things when Rosa uh, is just straight up Luma Shot. Because Luma Shot sets up what we call Tether versus Detether. Tether is when Luma is next to Rosa and is attached to her. And Detether is when you use Neutral B and now Luma is separate from Rosa. Luma is going to function pretty differently during that. One of the most important things is understanding the distance Luma's at. So, when you shoot Luma, you notice Luma goes a certain distance, but then Luma actually walks forward. And this distance Luma's currently at is the distance Luma is going to always try to go towards. Whenever you're moving with Rosa, Luma's going to follow Rosa's movement and try to be at that distance in front of her. So if you turn around, Luma is going to turn around to go the other way. And there's going to be a lot of mind games with this because you as the Rosa player are going to have to constantly like, move yourself around to move Luma around, and most people aren't going to be quite aware of how Luma's moving where or when. And you see there's a bit of a delay when Luma turns around after Rosa and chases, and you can kind of use that to stagger Luma's movement. If you mess around by the like kind of turn around back and forth, you'll see what I mean. Luma gets three jumps when off stage while detethered, and if Luma does not touch a stage or get on the stage after third jump, Luma will fall to his death unless you use Neutral B to recall Luma to Rosa. Luma will also, if you attack with Luma as you see there, Luma will actually not jump during the attacks, but while detethered, Luma will fall off stage. So if Luma is tethered to Rosa, Luma will kind of always be with Rosa. Uh, Luma will like almost teleport to her or you recall Luma off stage. But during the C tether mode, uh, Luma will just naturally be falling during attacks. So you can use down to, you can use multi jab, you can use smashes to have the Luma lower and lower. So Luma, when detethered, actually does more damage and very slightly more knockback with all of his attacks compared to when he is tethered to Rosa. I think it's about, I think it's 50% more damage dealt when detethered, which is a lot. So for example, Tethered, Luma up till 10% damage. Detether, 15.1% damage. And the point was probably a hidden decimal of 0 0.05 or something. Down tilt, 4.4, 6.6. This is huge, actually. Because if you can hit someone with, like, Rosa and Luma, but Luma's detethered, you'll get a lot more damage on your attacks. One thing about the tether as well is not only does Luma deal with damage, but Luma takes 25% less damage and significantly less knockback when getting hit while detethered. So, you could actually throw Luma out and kind of use that to have Luma tank certain attacks and just know Luma's relatively safe while detethered. It's harder to cover for Luma but it's also like you can afford Luma getting hit more in those scenarios. So, when Luma's off stage, there is a couple interesting mechanics going on, uh, especially when Luma is detethered. So, when Luma's off stage, Luma wants to recover to Rosa, and Luma has three jumps to do this. After the third jump, if Luma doesn't get to the stage, it will fall to his death unless Rosa recalls him. Um, and when Luma's off stage and you're doing attacks with Luma, Luma will not jump during the attacks. 
So you can actually use this to your advantage to position Luma in a lot of different ways and basically do a lot of different attacks. So for example here, you can use down tilt to have Luma constantly falling uh, while throwing out a hitbox. Also fun little fact is you can actually cancel the jumps with an attack and it still counts as using the jump. It's super niche, not really that practical, but it's cool to know. This is particularly useful with jab, especially multi-jab. It catches certain recoveries, especially tether recoveries, very well if you position it right. And it's hard for the opponents to play around. Shoot off stage and then just... Jab, jab, jab. Multi-jab is jelly about it there, but it's whatever you want. There's a lot of room for your creativity, and this is a very underexplored part of Rosa. Not because people haven't tried learning it, but because there is so much nuance and like situations that occur uh, between players and characters in this game, that's hard to know everything. You can even charge smashes and have Luma falling while charging the smashes. There's one exception, that's if you use Starbits, Starbits actually completely stops Luma's movement, even off stage. So you see how Luma's not falling during the Starbits? That's really useful, because uh, you can basically put Luma off stage, and then kind of like down to a Luma jab, whatever, until Luma falls into the spot you want, and then keep it there with Starbits until you want to do something else. Aerials also stall Luma, however, most of Luma's aerials move Luma as well. So like if you downer with Luma, it's not going to be falling, but the downer is going to put it a little bit lower, or the upper is going to put it higher. So you can use those aerials to really mix up like the Luma movement. So when you have a Luma tethered and you crawl with Rosa, Luma kind of gets this weird like delayed movement. It'll make sense if I just show it to you here. So see how kind of like moves at, at like very like specific intervals with weird delays. And also crawling with Rosa in general is kind of an underrated tool because Rosa gets very short during her crawl. And she can kind of use that to outspace, like, to make a lot of rising aerials whiff and just really make it harder to hit her because she comes so much smaller. But of course, it's at the cost of her mobility. So you have to know when you need to, like, microspace versus just straight up move. Um, another thing you can do is that when you're crawling with Rosa and Luma is tethered to you, Luma actually gets a little bit lower to the ground. So if you do a down tilt and forward tilt in particular, after crouching with Rosa for like a few frames, you actually hit the, the ledge versus loft characters with Ro with Luma down tilt and Luma forward tilt. But only specifically doing those moves after crouching for a little bit. Other things worth mentioning, uh, with the, I should mention this character rule, Luma's attributes in general. So Luma has 52 health in 1v1s. Technically, it's 40 health, but Luma doesn't get affected by the 1v1 multiplier. Just think about it as 52 health. And Luma takes in 1v1s 10 seconds to respawn. Now, Luma's respawn timer is actually different in 2v2 and 3v3s. Uh, in 2v2s, uh, 5 players, 6 players, whatever. But for competitive purposes, 10 seconds, 1v1s. Which is... Quite a bit of time, uh, you always have to keep the amount of playing the character. When is Luma going to respawn? And when Luma respawns, there is a very small period of uh, invulnerability. But for the most part, Luma is vulnerable once he respawns. And good players are going to exploit that by hitting Luma. Uh, as well, Hitting Rosa as Luma is going to respawn to separate the two of them. So, Lunar Landing. Lunar landing is one of the most vital things to know as Rosalina, but it's very easy. Basically, right before you hit the ground, you can use an attack. And Rosa's attack won't finish. She'll touch the ground during the animation. But Luma's attack will actually finish uh, because there's no like landing lag on Luma touching the ground. So this has infinite utility in Rosa's kit. Like you are playing Rosa for this in particular. This is absolutely insane. Because you can do it with every aerial. Up air, down air, forward air, back air, neutral air. And there are setups for this. Uh, with Rosa, you can do neutral air. And then you can, if you delay a little bit, you can have a 
perfect time to learn to land aerial, where Luma's attacking, where Rose is free to act and move around uh, during the animation Luma's attacking in. You can even use up air and down air, which aren't nearly as useful as uh, useful as neutral air, to do the same thing. But the timing for it creates a perfect timing to do aerials with Luma, where basically you're touching the ground on the exact frame you start doing the aerial with Luma for the most frame advantage on these aerials. Some aerials in particular have pretty lenient timings, like landing with like an up air, neutral air, forward air, pretty lenient timing when you can land and have good frame advantage, but, um, and also down air. However, with down air and back air, if you have frame perfect timing on landing with the aerial, you get really plus on block aerial pressure with down air and the back air. So back air in particular, something you will notice here is that um, we use down air because the down air is going to time it perfectly so you get the back air with Luma, the frame rose touches the ground. And this is a big deal because with back air, uh, if you don't time it perfectly, Rosa enters landing leg. But if you do it perfectly in a situation like this, where someone parries the back air from Luma, right? So they're parrying the Luma pressure. This grab is guaranteed if you time it right, even on the parry. It is insanely powerful. Situations like this are why you're playing the character, where they can block your aerial, and blocking the aerial means they get hit. They parry it, it means they get hit. They have to be out of the way completely of this or somehow challenge it. And you can do the same thing with down air. Down air on block is going to create these insanely plus on block situations with a delayed aerial. So that's really strong. Uh, with up air in these situations, up air is nice because Luma's up air is extremely big. You can cobble off of it, including killing sometimes. And it's a really good anti air. So something like neutral air into up air is extremely powerful. And those will be the main aerials you use with Luma landing. And for the most part, you're going to be setting up these Lunar lands, primarily with neutral air and up air. Down air is more situational. And you're not often going to be doing a Lunar landed forward air. That's just extremely situational and generally just not too useful by the other aerials. And even a Lunar landed neutral air isn't too useful. Uh, the hitbox on it isn't particularly big nor is easy to cobble off of that but there is some utility for it this is not something you're focusing on with today's literal lands so another really important tech for this character is that you can cancel all of luma's animations with specials this is particularly important when canceling into star bits and neutral bait with star bits, this allows you to do things like a multi-jab or a back air, uh, up air, whatever it is, and then immediately go from using that Luma attack into star bits, which is one of Rose's strongest moves by far. Especially because you can do things like back air, which positions Luma farther away from Rosa, and then do a star bits with essentially a like repositioned Luma. In this case, you can see with a multi-jab where I can kind of run around with Rosa while the multi jabs going off with Luma, but you can see while Luma's multi-jabbing, star bits. So really versatile position cancels. Here, you're going to see the back air of the star bits I mentioned. That is key, key right here. But you can see also you cannot use the jab to cancel Luma. It has to be specialist. Back air, star bits one of the premier spacing tools for this character the opponent has to respect lunar land back air and the starboard pressure it's really safe covers a lot um it's just a phenomenal tool so luma can act during various uh, instances rosa cannot act in so during tech rules for example when rosa is frozen or sleep or her shield is broken. Uh, even when getting hit by moves, when getting pummeled, when getting thrown. There's various instances Luma can act during. 
And knowing these is huge because it can really stop people from pressuring and just kind of pressing buttons. In turn situations that normally advantageous for the opponent, it's a Rosa's advantage. Like this, you know, Rosa, Sherbrooke or whatever, she can't do anything. But Luma be able to can really defend her and catch people off guard. However, you can only act with normals. And only with normals relative to Rosa's position. So, for example, I can only use tilts right now or a jab because Rosa's on the ground. But if I was in the spot in the air, Rosa could do aerials instead. And here, you will see during the grab, Luma acting while Rosa is getting grabbed. Uh, I think specifically, one of the more useful techniques is using Luma to, like, break a grab. But having Luma attack just as you're getting grabbed, so a bit of a buffer helps a lot. See, grab, Luma down tilt. And they're during a throw. Rob burying. This is a true punish on Rob down throw. Rob is unable to down throw Rosa while Luma is around. And that is huge. It is also worth mentioning real quick that while you are detethered, Luma can actually act faster during all these instances. During getting grabbed, thrown, attack. Luma can basically act instantly if Luma is detethered, where if Luma is tethered to Rosa, there's a bit of a delay. Now, since Luma is a hurt box himself, that means when the opponent hits Luma, they're gonna, if a move lingers when hitting the opponent as a lot of hit lag, that will apply to Luma. Granted, it doesn't, there's not as much hit lag on hitting Luma, as there is on hitting most things like a normal character, but it's still there. So Rob, for example, this neutral air will with, with Rosa spot dodging normally, but because Luma's here, the neutral air lasts a little bit longer, causing it to hit Rosa. Now this can be used both to your detriment to extend the moves and cover positions longer, but also to your favor because that puts the opponent in more lag. Uh, if you block an attack, and they hit Luma after hitting Rosa Shield, for example. That's a bit of extra lag. And they hit both at the same time, but as a, as a move with a lot of hit lag, that's a bigger window to punish. Even just if they hit Luma, but not hit Rosa, that can be a big window to punish. And there's so many situations that you have to watch out for when playing this character, where it's like, they're just going to hit Luma, and that is going to change how the move interacts with you, the Rosa player. And this is just showcasing the, the same exact situation, but Luma not getting hit. See, the Rob Nair just doesn't linger. Just whiffs completely now. Luma can also block projectiles because it is a hurt box. And that is huge. Granted, it doesn't recover really Rosa well if she's running forward. Rosa's, like, body kind of... It kind of gets in the way of Luma blocking the projectile when she's running. But if Rosa's just walking... Or if Rosa shoots Luma out somehow, whether through Neutral B or some other tech, Luma is a great tool to block projectiles with. So I think I mentioned before about Luma being vulnerable during rolls, just showcasing like, while Rosa is rolling, she's invincible. Luma is still vulnerable. Luma is actually never invincible besides when Rosalina and Luma are spawning. And there is a brief period of time when Luma spawns where Luma like flashes in and is not vulnerable. But otherwise, Luma's always vulnerable. Uh, during Rosa's rolls, spot dodges, shielding even Luma can be hit if the shield isn't covering Luma. At the ledge, Luma's vulnerable. So Luma's constantly in danger. Or here, even during a parry, Luma's vulnerable. And that's... All the beginner stuff with uh, Rosa and Luma that, like, you generally should know. It's not stuff that's particularly hard to learn. And it's, like, things you're going to have to know to play the character, for sure. So, the intermediate stuff uh, is the stuff that you have to learn. But you should learn it when you're at least comfortable with the basics of Rosa. 
I say this is a stuff where it's like, you need to know the stuff at a certain point to become like a good Rosa. And I can tell if a Rosa is good or not a lot of times just by how much to implement all the stuff here. But this is not the building blocks of playing her. This is like after you've made those building blocks, like put them in place. And the first thing we're talking about is the attack canceling, because that's the reason you're playing this character in the first place, really. Um, and basically how it works with this character is you can cancel any tilt, uh, dash attack, or jab in with Luma into a Rosa aerial. So Luma will do it every attack on the ground while Rosa is doing an aerial. And so you can do things like dash attack in air, which is like a very good one, or dash attack forward air. Um, you can have Luma up tilt while Rosa is forward airing or up airing or whatever you want. There's a lot of creativity. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to most be using Luma dash attack Rosa fair, Luma dash attack Rosa neutral air, uh, Luma down tilt Rosa fair, Luma down tilt Rosa neutral air, and pretty much the same applies for the forward tilt up tilt. Use those plus Rosa neutral air and forward air are your, your main ways to use this. And the way this is done is during the first three frames of doing an attack with Luma, uh, has to be a tilt dash attack or jab, you will press jump with Rosa, and you press jump while holding the direction you want for the aerial. So let's say you want a forward air, you make sure to hold forward while pressing jump. You want a neutral air, you make sure to do the attack and then let go of the analog stick so a neutral air comes out. Although the tricky thing with that is then holding the stick again to make sure you get Rosa's air drift. They see here, that's just showcasing down tilt near. Down tilt near once again. Uh, Luma also will follow you with the jump if you don't fast fall afterwards. Another nice thing about doing the attack cancels is if you do a Rosa neutral air, up air, and down air without fast falling right away, you can set up a Lunar Land. So you can combine doing the attack cancels with the Lunar Lands from the beginner part of Rosa to like create these really long and intricate like pressure strings that cover a lot. So another application of attack cancels and everyone can dash attack cancel in this game. Uh, it generally gives most characters a little bit more grab range. So it's actually something like worth doing with a lot of characters. But with Rose in particular, because of Luma, you can do the dash attack can into a grab cancel with uh, Rosa and Luma's dash attack will come out followed by Rosa's grab. This is good for a lot of reasons. So first of all, Lewis dash attack is frame six, which is faster than Rosa's dash grab and is actually faster than any dash grab in the game. So you're throwing out a hitbox that can hit the opponent's shield and lock them a shield. Um, you can hit the opponent directly, put them in sun so the grab connects. You can clank out a grounded move, put them in lag and then the grab connects. Um, Luma's moving forward so it might be able to block a projectile and then Rosa's grab connects. You can even pick someone up off the ground with the Luma dash tag connecting the grab. And so it's just really strong to use this pretty much whenever you're going for a uh, dash grab with Rosa in the first place and you have Luma around. And Rosa's dash grab is pretty far, pretty fast. And this just makes it like an even more like difficult to deal with pressure tool. Uh, it's really one of Rosa's like strongest options in our kit. And you can see it there, it's really quick. So yeah, very, very strong, very simple to do. Uh, you should like use this a lot when you get the chances for dash grabs. This is just showcasing, hey, they're on the ground. Hit them on the ground, boom, a dash sack, grab them. Now, the one thing that's bad about this is if someone parries the Luma dash attack, they will have enough iframes uh, during the parry to avoid the Luma grab. I mean, the, the Rosa grab. You see right there, grab miss and he's just in a lot of lag. It's one of those things that people accidentally do, so I wouldn't worry too much about playing around it. Um, but it does happen. And sometimes like if you know the opponent's just gonna shield for sure, you might just wanna go for the grab without using the, the dash attack version of it. There is a weird mechanic uh, with uh, Luma, where if Luma is supposed to be next to Rosa, supposed to be tethered, but is really far away, and you do a smash attack, Luma will basically teleport towards Rosa. Other times with all her smash attacks, but it's most notable with down smash, and you'll, it's easier to show than explain. 
So you can see this is the frame the down smash is coming out on. And look how close Luma is when it starts compared to like right afterwards. So it's interesting way to pull Luma close to you. Uh, just for positioning of Luma. Whether someone likes trying to hit Luma, you want to pull it next to you. Or someone's next to Rose and you want to just have Luma with you. Uh, it really catch both guard. And if Luma's really far away, it'll teleport like towards Rosa, but won't be right next to her. So you can really catch people off guard. And there's basically, there's a lot of weird mind games you can play with this, uh, with all the smashes, but especially down smashes, like weird. So another fun aspect of Luma is you can actually attack with Luma while Rosa's in various states, uh, including grounded attack options. So let's say uh, Peach back here is me in this clip and I'm gonna miss the tech. And while I'm missing the tech, Luma can actually attack with a tilt. Um, and Luma can attack if I do a tech roll or a tech in place. And it's a really strong option because it basically has a free hitbox coming out as long as Luma's around and not like in some sort of hit lag or tumble or whatever. While Rosa's in a generally poor defensive position. Generally when you force an attack chases is not great. But this can provide both a defensive option and you can even use it offensively. You could um, like tech roll towards someone and have an up tilt coming out while Rose is tech wrong towards them to reversal them or even if they block that to put them in the spot where like they're blocking the Luma up tilt and now you can press them with Rosa after your tech roll is done. So always keep that in mind. Um, and it's just gonna catch both guard. Even if they're ready for it, it's hard to punish it. There's a lot of times Luma can actually attack. That's just weird. Uh, so for example, during any status such as sleep, shield break being frozen and buried uh luma can actually attack so you see his rosa sorrow where he blizzards me and luma can still basically defend rosa and it's just really nice for people to deal with uh gives you kind of this defensive tool to like stop people as you're in these vulnerable spots and if your mashing is really good you can basically at low percents completely stop people from pressuring you after getting slept sure broke or whatever so while generally having Luma is pretty bad, you get access to one thing without Luma, and that's B reverse neutral B. Um, Grant, you can do this with Luma around, and you can B reverse side B. But B reverse neutral B without Luma is a particularly good option for Rosa to change her momentum in the air very quickly. So you see, like, huge changes in momentum, um, especially with Rosa's really good air drift. She can be very tricky in the air and very hard to hit if someone's even slightly overextending on chasing her. And there's not much lag on the neutral B B reverse as well. So you can do it and basically attack with Rosa immediately, air dodge, whatever you want. And she's a very strong tech. You can even intentionally sometimes shoot Luma away and try landing without Luma and then use the B reverse so you can move with Rosa and then pull Luma back to you at the same time and get really tricky with all this stuff. So definitely master this tech. And doing a beer burst is pretty easy. Basically, hold it one direction. You're going to hold one direction, so I got like aerial drift in that direction. You're gonna let go of the directional input, press B, and then flick the stick in the opposite direction to kind of transfer your momentum in the opposite way. And it's a very quick movement. It takes a bit of practice to get used to, but it's most characters have a way to do this, and it's just something you should be able to do. So because Luma, when detethered, wants to be in the same height as Rosa, you can actually use this to send Luma flying forward. We call this Luma launching, uh, Luma vaulting, whatever you want. I like Luma launch personally. And the idea is basically when Luma's behind Rosa, trying to like catch up and get in front of her, uh, we're gonna jump. So Luma is going to have that far momentum and then jump in the air with far momentum and go flying. And you can use this for a lot of stuff. You can use this just to position Luma. Or well, it's all about Luma positioning. You can use this like very aggressively to catch people off guard. Uh, make us have like weird edge guards, lead traps. Because you can even put Luma off stage with this. And it's just really annoying for the opponent to deal with. Because people aren't ready for it. And the angle Luma launches at is kind of hard to swat as well. And you can use this with platforms for even more tomfoolery. So I see the jump. And then puts on the platform, charges the up smash. And it's just like, what's going on? 
This, this is stupid. This is wild. What? That's probably most people are thinking. It's it's really janky stuff to deal with. And honestly, it's something that I think Rosa players don't explore using enough intentionally. Like purposely shooting Luma behind us in neutral to set up these launches could be a really good strategy that has not been explored. So when you're shielding um, and Luma is detethered, Luma actually stops moving. However, once you start rolling or moving, Luma will start moving again. So you can use this to your advantage. You can do things like shield and then roll behind Luma and Luma will move forward or Rosa rolls behind and kind of swap places, almost like castling a chess. And you can use this to get these weird punishes that people aren't ready for and basically make deal with Rosa's shield when Luma's not there really awkward because Luma will pop up immediately. And you see me versus Ken uh, using this actually to secure a kill. So this is a pretty niche tech, but it's good to know. You can actually cancel your uh, your jumps with down B. So let's say, and Rosa has very floaty, high reaching jumps. So sometimes you want to jump, but you don't want the full height in the jump. So using the down B to cancel the jump can be very effective. Uh, it, the down B also kind of stalls you in the air for the animation, but only the first time you use it in the air. So you can use it both as a way to cancel game momentum and your well, height and your jumps, but also to cancel falling for a little bit, as you'll see here. And here you can just see the same thing, but only with the full hop. And like you really notice here how much this cancels, like both climbing with the jump, but falling after the jump. So not doing it versus doing it. On to the event stuff with uh, Rosa. This is the stuff that, like, you want to know eventually because you want to optimize the character. And a lot of this stuff is actually very, very, very useful stuff. But it's stuff that's a bit harder to use uh, just because understanding when to use it, even the execution of how to use it is kind of difficult. And these are the things you basically will save for last, but you really look forward to getting to a point where you actually can apply these. Because a lot of these things are really like the results of understanding how to do certain inputs with Rosa, how Luma interacts and moves particularly. So first thing is uh, clanking moves with actual Luma's grounded attacks. Uh, clanking in general isn't exactly a foreign concept in Smash, but you can use this very well with uh, Luma. We can intentionally use Luma to trade with a grounded move and clank that. And when you do that clank, the opponent will be in lag along with Luma, but Rosa won't be in clank lag, so you can actually punish. And you can see this here versus Ken. He uses forward tilt, and I'm going to use Luma down tilt to clank up the move, putting him in a lot of lag while Rosa's free to act. And like, I don't get punished off this, but you see I can kind of use that clank just to move forward and force Ken in a spot that makes him uncomfortable. Because I move forward, Luma's a good spot, and this is all just off of him clanking with Luma. So see down tilt clank, move forward, I run up shield, let go of shield. So now Luma's moving forward because I let go of the shield. And now I have all this control with Luma center stage and I can really just play around that. Right, so star, star bits and up smash is classic neutral, the character. If Luma starts doing a multi-jab while Rosa is unable to act, and this can occur in many situations. This can occur of uh, a tech situation. This can occur off of a situation where Rosa's shield broken. Um, th there's a lot of situations uh, where Luma can attack where Rosa can't. And you can put a jab. And you can start multi-jabbing. Now, if you want to keep holding the multi-jab, once you get the multi-jab out, hold the attack button. If you're multi just be the A button. Hold that, and you can keep Luma multi-jabbing. Now, there's a couple interesting things you can do here. One is you can actually cancel the multi-jab into star bits or technically any special move uh, but star bits tends to be the most useful here um you can also if you're really good you can hold this and if someone blocks the multi jab you can grab them they're stuck in shield from the multi jab the bc you gotta take a guaranteed grab or uh, just make sure i let go of the uh, attack button you can even do rosa attacks if you're really fast at letting go of the attack button and at pressing it again with the attack you want to do so say you want to do um, Luma multi jab and then Rosa up smash. You'd have to very quickly let go of the A button and repress it so Luma's still multi jabbing. 
while Rosa does the up smash. And you can see here, I'm just gonna showcase like the whole holding the Luma multi jab, running around and going for a grab because I see Karama's blocking, so he literally cannot avoid the grab at that point. And this clip just showcases more like freedom of movement with the multi jab desync stuff. Uh, using that piece of multi jab is actually something I've considered for ledge trapping, but never like really found a great use for. And this is a exactly a practical way to set it up, but it's a practical way to practice the execution on holding Luma multi jab while doing things with Rosa. So, Wooder Locking is a very interesting technique that has a lot of uses, even if it's not like super clear at first to see how to use this. Uh, so Lunar Lock is, is that when Luna is at a certain position and you'll be able to see the positioning here, while still technically supposed to be tethered to Rosa, so it's supposed to be close to Rosa, um, and you position Luma in a certain way and attack with Luma, Luma will actually stay at that distance from Rosa. And you can use this to effectively have like detether tilts, even aerials. Uh, a good way to set this up is doing a lunar dash uh, forward tilt or down tilt with Luma while Rosa is doing the wave dash backwards, as you'll see here. And it sets up the pos perfect positioning for these Luma locks. The thing that's difficult is that Luma only stays locked while you're attacking. The moment you start moving and stop attacking, Luma's go, go back to where uh, he wants to be relative to Rosa. So you can see here, that is the Lunar Dash uh, down tilt while Rosa's wave dashing backwards and this is the position you want to be at. And you see how you can immediately jump there and Luma stays locked in this position during the neutral air. So lock that position and now these down tilts keep Luma locked in this position as long as Rosa is doing the down tilt or really whatever attack Rosa wants to do. And it's very, it's awkward because in some matchups this is very useful versus characters like let's say Mario or if you start pressuring a character um, up close in general they get a little bit scared it can be good. But it's not particularly useful in matchups where the opponent's throwing a lot of projectiles or longer range moves that basically like play outside of the range, this can really pressure the opponent. Uh, but this is one of those techs that really good Rosa players still don't use that much. Even I don't use as much as I could. And there is a lot of potential in this because it, it gives you the benefit of, hey, I have Luma at a distance, pressuring safely, hitting the opponent, whatever, but the strength of, oh, Luma can be next to me whenever I need it. Whereas when you shoot Luma out and just play the tether, if the opponent gets past Luma, uh, and suddenly it's in Rosa's face while Luma's detethered, you can't use Luma to protect yourself. So this kind of deals with that problem really well.